Welcome, my friends, to another edition of Tiffin Box TV. I'm your host, Sei Shu, and I am speaking to none other than none other than Lindsay Adler, who's a New York-based fashion photographer and definitely well known around the world now thanks to her books, thanks to her coaching on Creative Live and other places as she runs workshops for a lot of people. Uh, she's constantly running around getting things done for photographers and her, and her own business. Uh, Lindsay, thanks so much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. You're welcome. Yeah, uh, I can hear you. Great, wonderful. I, I wasn't sure, that we got, I think there's a bit of a, uh, of a lag here, but uh, jumping right into it, uh, the reason we are talking today, of course, is we're, you know, we've known each other for quite some time and I've followed your, your work for the longest time online, of course, um, and you've got this great ability to be everywhere at every time that someone needs help. Uh, how do you manage to do that? How, do, how are you able to juggle your schedule so efficiently? Yeah, well, part of what I've found is that when I have a weakness, um, I try to outsource it to somebody else. If there's something that I'm not good at, I will pass it along to someone else. And I've decided, or I decided a couple years ago that I'd much rather be poor and have more time to do what I like and hope that I can become wealthier because if I just try to do everything, if I try to do the invoicing and the taxes and um, also the marketing as well as the social media as well as the photography as well as the printing as well, I mean, there's so many things. So if I can focus it down to client relationships and creating the photographs, then that's, you know, that's my specialty. That's my core competency. So I'll focus on that and outsource everything else. So. Nowadays, I have someone that helps me with my marketing. I have an accountant and a bookkeeper. I hire a graphic designer instead of doing it myself. So I think I would say it's focusing on what I'm good at. You know, one of the things I've taken away from, from you is that you, you're a prolific writer as well. You've, you've written several books now. Um, how do you find the time to write books and run a business? Is that, is that just something that you've just managed to do with having good managers at, uh, in your business or is it is, is that something that comes from within you that you say well I have to write and so photography is also part of it yeah I would say that it's the latter um, I I think that I'm a visual artist but in general I'm a communicator and I'm communicating ideas and that might be communicating ideas through photographs it could be through writing it could be through teaching it's you know all of those things so what I've found is my a good writing time for me is travel time, and I do a great deal of travel. So I am at airports a lot, and on subways, and in taxis, and so that was a good time for me to to write. And then also sometimes what I'll do is uh, I set aside time to write in the morning. Like I wake up, I walk my dog, I do the little you know the little things you have to get out of sure. the way. And then if I can sit for like an hour and write something. Already early in my day, I feel like I've accomplished something. Like I've already, I've already shared something. I've already had a great idea. I've expressed something. So sometimes it feels good to give yourself that hour to write or produce because then already your day's off to a great start. And even if you weren't productive the rest of the day, you know you accomplished something good. Excellent. We're Very... getting bogged down by emails. Oh god. Yeah, email. that's that's such such <laughs> solid advice. Thank you so much for that. Um, jumping right ahead into what. You know, we're really meant to be speaking about is your upcoming webinar, which is completely free on shoot.edit and it's Photoshop techniques for photographers. You are phenomenal at photography, phenomenal at Photoshop retouching. I've seen your videos on Creative Live and I'm just blown away. Uh, it starts with great lighting, of course, uh, but you take it to another level when it comes to Photoshop, when it comes to using things like Lightroom. Uh, what is it that you are going to be talking about during this free webinar that's coming up on July 1st, by the way, uh, for who's, whoever's listening, it's July 1st on shoot.edit. I'll have a registration link down below, but I'm just curious, like, what what is it that, that you know, again, I'm just like, my, my mind is completely like amazed at how you're able to do photoshop and photography and lighting and writing books <laughs> i'm just like what but what is it that you're going to be talking about on the webinar well so one of the things that i i was kind of intimidated by photoshop um early on because really i don't i don't have an art background um, so I actually was the tech nerd. Um, I, I took all the tech classes in high school, so it was digital electronics, and I took CAD, and I took all of that stuff. And so I saw Photoshop as being something that was already good for those people that knew how to 
paint and to draw and, and we're good at those things. And so even up through college, even by the end of college, I had pretty rudimentary knowledge of what Photoshop was because it seemed scary. And then all of a sudden it just clicked. Like I don't even know. I think it's when all of a sudden I actually understood adjustment layers and layer masks. <laughs> and I, it took me years. I mean years, which now it feels so easy to me. But the point is of what I'm going to share is I want to share how Photoshop can be the next realm of creativity. But you don't have to have a traditional art background. You don't need to be able to draw and do all those things. It's really your place to harness color and texture and to modify the environment to fit your vision, but without needing to have a degree in digital manipulation. You know? So we'll talk about things like that. And then I'll also talk a little bit about some creative retouching techniques. Um, because typically when I am planning a shoot, I know what I'm going to do in post. It's not an afterthought. It's not saving the shot. Like as I plan my shoot, I know okay, how much of this makeup's in camera, how much of it's post. How much of the color is in camera, how much is in post. How much am I going to change the environment? Is it going all of that stuff? So it's important to how I think, and it's important to my inspiration. And a lot of times, I'm actually inspired by a Photoshop technique that I want to try. So I'll plan a shoot around that Photoshop technique. So it's just another place to get ideas and another place to become a better artist. Fantastic. Wow. There's an incredible amount of planning that goes into your photo shoots, clearly. And, uh, and that's, not, that's, a, that's a takeaway right there. Because a lot of people, I think, say, hey, let's, let's go out and photograph and, and let's see what comes up. And uh, things, things don't usually sort of happen by, by uh, luck or by, by, by just, you know, by divine intervention. You really have to, you know, Sketch it out, I think, uh, and and see what's gonna what's what what it is that in what direction you want to be taking this photo shoot. That's fantastic advice right there. Again, um, you are a, a really a, a, a brilliant teacher. Uh, you've been on Creative Live, as I've mentioned already. Uh, you you run your own workshops. Why is it that you teach? What why is it so important for you to teach photographers? There are a couple reasons that I like teaching. Um, well, one of the reasons is because. I know that photography is part of me. Like I am a photographer, there's no way around it. And so I know that other photographers share that same love and same passion. And I'm lucky enough to be able to do what I love every single day. And it took me a long time before I ever took a decent photo. Like I mean like a long time before I even understood what a good photo was. And so if I can help other people skip all of the misery that I went through and get to the point more quickly, become a better photographer, embrace what they love, um, I would be more than happy to do that. And, and photography is really a given community. And as I travel around, there's so many warm people. And, you know, even if somebody's from a different part of the world with different values, different everything, when you have photography the same, I mean, you can instantly have conversations for hours. And so I love that community. Yeah, absolutely. It sounds almost like you're equating photography to music where, you know, the music is the, the great, uh, you know, equalizer, I guess, uh, brings people together and, and, and really ha everybody's uh, in a happy space. Um, your webinar is, again, July 1st, and I'll have the links and the times and things like that for everybody. Uh, one last question to you. When it comes down to what you're seeing in the, in the industry right now, what seems to be the most challenging thing that photographers are facing at the moment? It's estimated that we create Five, that we see 5,000 marketing motivated images a day. This doesn't just mean images. This means 5,000 that are trying to grab our attention in some way. And uh, so I think that's a huge challenge because how do we stand out from the competition? How do we make ourselves, the, our images stand out among those five then? And so really it's not about just the technique, it's about your ideas. And so it's getting the photographers, everybody, quickly up to the point of being technically proficient and then the ideas can really make you stand out. So that's what I think it challenges. And really if we work hard at it, there is there is a solution. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining me today, Lindsay. I know we've had some issues with scheduling and technology and all this other stuff, but you've been so patient and professional about it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, I look forward to this phenomenal webinar on July 1st. Uh, I keep learning from you all the time, and I know other people feel the same way, that you know, any 30-minute any segment from you, you're like, what? You can do that? <laughs> you know, And it's amazing, <laughs> really. Um, I, I value your time and your expertise in this, in, this, uh, in this industry, and I thank you for everything that you're doing. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Great chatting with you. Take care now. Bye. Bye.